When you enter into God, you enter a location. God is not just a being. God is a location. So when you enter into God, that's why God is everywhere. He can be in the middle of a war zone. Others see only blood, but some can see God. Stephen was being stoned. While they were seeing a man dying, he was seeing the one upon the throne. Why? Because he was in the Lord. Your reality is determined by where you are located. Your evaluation is determined by where you stand in the spirit realm. I am telling you that we have been translocated by reason of hunger, desire, and a quest for truth. These are the keys that open the doors to where the Lord overflows. So we are not standing in Lake Lakoe to that end. Don't expect local miracles. I need you to expect eternal reward. I need you to expect the things that are impossible on this physical location. Expect the things that are born only out of the location of the spirit. We have come to Zion, the city of the living God. We stand in the heavenly Jerusalem. We come under a new kind of law and system of engagement. We have entered into the place where the Spirit of God is the only determining factor. There is an overflow of power, an overflow of grace, truth, and mercy. To the man that will drop in, you will be submerged in the deeper realities of God. God is not just a being. God is a journey. God is a, is one, a journey you never arrive at. You keep going, you get into measures of God. You get into places in God. But you can never exhaust the journey called God. Ilianda kimaso, melanda se krehizo satava zaketa, zanda rakeiso kreiza vanata, jala dia da dia da dia da dia da da baso kreiza. The Spirit of God said to me while we're praying, He said, If your father is an ever flowing river, then what are you? We are rivers. Out of our bellies, rivers. What you see in this room is not people that have come together. What you see in this room is a confluence of streams. Where do we meet? We meet at the confluence called Jesus. We meet at the river banks of Zion. We meet at the holy hills of God. These streams are flowing at the feet of the master. This is a confluence, a confluence, a confluence. When the river meets the ocean, each one receives the life of the other. Receive the life of God. I need you to understand that there is one that coordinates it all. His name is Holy Ghost. His name is Holy Spirit. He's the one that brings men into the holy things of God. You cannot enter into holiness, into Kadosh, without Holy Spirit. He's the one that teaches you the nature of holiness. He shows you the protocols of holiness. He commands you concerning the language of holiness. So tonight, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Ghost, we say thank you. Thank you for teaching us, for coordinating the miracle of God. Thank you for breaking the veil that separates us from the reality of heaven. Thank you because the place is open and porous. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving this room like a capsule. 
taking it away from the place of pain, shame, fear, brokenness, and raising it into the throne of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is going to heal. <clears throat> and you know that healing and deliverance are the same word. So when people hear deliverance, they only think of demonic possession. Was David demon possessed? He wasn't. But you hear him consistently we say things like, deliver me, Lord. Because this world you are in, you are a target, whether you like it or not. When some things are happening to me, and I say to myself, but how now? I suppose big past this one. <laughs> And then I forget. I remember that. Wait a minute, Isi. Have you forgotten what you are doing? Of course the enemy will make you a target. So I carry my stripes with honor. But knowing fully well that in all of these things, I am not overcome. But the Lord says that there are long-standing brokenness that he wants to call forth a complete liberation in the next three days. Because even person when they sick, at some point you need to wear. You know if he's still hospital forever. So the Lord says that many cycles are going to end in these days. It is unusual for a woman to be pregnant and not give birth. When you get to 40 weeks, you must birth. The Lord says that there are some cycles that have refused to end. But in the next three days, he is breaking the connecting chain. And he's causing them to end. Healing. There are some of you here, filled with the Holy Ghost. You know the Lord. But you cannot get over people you dated 10 years ago. You, are, you have characteristics that you are showing forth that are products of broken relationships that you experienced 12 years ago. In this meeting, it will end here. It has to end here. Because the Lord needs the whole version of you to do what he wants to do in the new day. So God is going to be breaking, scattering, removing. There are cloaks and garments you have worn for long. And they have determined your identity for so long. You have even believed that it is who you are. But the Spirit of God says, in the next three days, any identity that is not yours that was put upon you as a cloak. He says, as my fire comes down, it will burn them completely in the name of Jesus. He said, the kind of ashes that will come out of them is not the type you'll be able to use to trade in the spirit realm. He says, it will be blown away by the wind of his spirit. So in the next season, expect tangible miracles. Expect your mind to shift, the mind of your spirit to shift. You will look at sicknesses and rebuke them and they will answer you. Why? It is the transformation of the mind of a man. You see, the power of God is first activated in your thinking. Your mind changes and you see the possibilities of God. You are not trying to have faith that it will happen. He says to them that believe. Believing is a setting of your mind. They change the, the way you change the setting of your phone. And when you put it to be bright, it's bright. When you believe, by reason of the entrance of the word, your heart is shifted and your mind begins to see differently. When somebody tells you he cannot be healed, you see it differently and you say, get up in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you are seeing the possibility and you know how it works in the spirit realm. That's what is going to happen. The other thing God said he will do is the deep. He says deep calls to deep. He says, I am coming into your meeting." as the deep, the God of the deep. He says, and I am calling for the deep places of their lives. This meeting, please, don't offer God anything on the surface. Don't engage with God on 
the surface. Don't do all those, oh, I just bless you, Lord. I just thank you, Lord. You are so good. You are so wonderful. Oh, yes, yes, I love you. They are waiting for the next song. Don't do that. When you lie down on the floor, pour it from here. If you've not been able to tell God the truth in a long time, this is the meeting where you must speak the truth. This is the meeting where you must confess anything that has to be confessed. If there is any standard the Lord has set for you concerning how you should live, and you know you have not been meeting it, this is that meeting. Where you will cry out to God and say, Baba, I have only one life. This one life that I have, my God, it must count. It must count for the kingdom. Baba, remove anything you need to remove. If there is any question that has been lingering in your mind for years, you have not had the audacity to ask the Lord because you are afraid of what he will say. Ask him, this meeting, ask him. This is the place where you have the conversations of the deep. The conversations of the deep. You have often wondered, what is your life about? After this meeting, don't ask me for your purpose. Don't ask me why. Because this is where men receive the spirit of conviction by which they enter into the world and they do the will of God. Conviction. There are some questions that are not answered in sentences. They are answered in spirit. Measures of spirit. This is that meeting. Ask him. If you have ever said to yourself, God has called me to be an intercessor. God has called me to be a prayer warrior. God has called me to be a deliverer. I know in my heart, Kalia, so be anointed here. You don't need a man to pour oil on your head. There is an oil that comes when a man enters into the accuracy of request. I'm telling you, you see it consistently in the Bible. When people make the right cry, there was something that was released upon them from heaven. It is Satan that has made you a man that is full when you are yet deficient. There, is, there should be a hunger. There should be a searching. There should be a lack of satisfaction. There should be a measurement. Listen, I was reading the Bible recently and I was reading about Moses and I questioned God. I said, how can you say he was the meekest man? There are many people in the Bible that we saw now that they were meek now. I said, what was it about this guy? And God said, do you even understand the meaning of meek? I know we have definitions for it. One of the best definitions I had was meekness is strength under subjection. But then I went to check for the Hebrew word. And as I looked at it, all the meanings were things like poverty, emptiness, when you are deprived and lacking something. And I said, Moses was the meekest man? God said to me, Moses was a man that understood how far he was from possibly being able to fulfill the assignment of being the deliverer. He knew how much he was lacking. Because of that, he constantly ascended the mountain. Constantly cried out to me. Let me tell you, your meekness is not towards people. You can fake humility to men. But your meekness is evaluated towards God. It is a state and a position of your spirit. I'm not telling you to have a lack of confidence in the things God has given to you. Those are two different things. But a man that is able to measure the distance between what the Lord has said and where he is and receives help of the Lord, not rest in the spirit of condemnation and demonic satisfaction. That's no meekness. But every day you rise up and you say, my God, I realize, I see it, I know it. Paul Lekele Masovai. If you will fill my vessel, Lord. If you would use me, Jesus. If you would encapsulate my being. If you will flow through every cell in my body. Then my God, I will be able to move in the divine life and divine power that you want me to move in if I will be able to deliver your people. Baba, if you would look at me and you will deal 
oh God, with the struggles in my soul. My God, if you will bind and bound the spirit, oh God, of pain, of anger, of grief, of brokenness, of shame, of fear, if you will hold them captive, oh God, then somehow I will be able to do and fulfill. My God, I know that men look at me and they think that I am powerful. But Baba, you are the sustainers of my life, oh God. You are the one that fills me up, Baba. You are the one that gives me the access into the heights of the heavens. My God, I will rest in you. You are my hiding place, Jesus. Show me, show me, show me, show me, show me, show me, show me. How to be light in the flesh and heavy, oh God, in the spirit. Ia landa krendo sukubara kasi katalabata.